Is it just me? It seems like every day that goes by, the Miami Hurricanes are starting to look more and more like the Tennessee Vols. Miami is the Tennessee of the ACC at this point. It, you know, th th of course, they want Manny Diaz fired now. I mean, oh, my God, you lost to Alabama and Michigan State. We better get rid of Manny Diaz. And, look, I'm not saying that you should or you shouldn't get rid of Manny Diaz. I'm not saying Manny Diaz is a good coach, and I'm not saying Manny Diaz is a bad coach. You fire your coach every three years, you're, you, you're just never going to have a successful program, ever. It's just impossible. It's just not going to happen. Tennessee went down this road for the majority of the 2010s, starting in about 2007, 2008, when they got rid of Philip Fulmer. And then they just brought in this long list of losers to coach for two or three years. Every single time they hired a coach, the fan base said, well, this is the one, this is the coach, this is the one that's going to get us back where we need to be. And then as soon as the coach loses one game in his first season, they want him fired. And then as soon as they have one season where they, you know, only win five, six, seven games, they, they want him fired again. And then, you know, if you don't play this quarterback instead of that quarterback, they want him fired. And Tennessee just went down this long list of coaches that they just – you know, every two or three years, they were changing coaches. I mean, Lane Kiffin, Derek Dooley, Butch Jones, Jeremy Pruitt, now Josh Heupel. And and I haven't seen two Tennessee fans credit. I haven't seen many Tennessee fans yet this season that want Josh Heupel fired in his first season on Rocky Flop. But don't we all know with Tennessee, it's just a matter of time, two, three years, whatever the case they're going to want him gone. Why? Tennessee's not going to be a very good team. And this year, they're not going to be a very good team. Next year, they're not going to be a very good team the year after that. We all know that. The Tennessee fans don't understand that. Uh, Tennessee and Miami are not, are, are, not, are not football programs that just happen to be having a bad season. They're bad football programs um, over a long period of time. Uh, but we'll get back to Miami. But, so now they want Manny Diaz gone. They want him uh, fired. Now, don't don't forget, when they brought Manny Diaz in, he was the savior, right? He's a Miami guy. He's he, You know, he was previously on the staff. He knows all the players. He's familiar with the area for recruiting, which I'm going to talk more about recruiting in Miami and the mindset that the fans have around that here in just a second. But you you just you have to pull this up and look at it because it's just it, it, it's absolutely ridiculous when you start to look at, at these uh, the, uh, coaches and how quick Miami goes through them. Just go back to when Miami joined the ACC way back in 2004. Remember that? Yeah, didn't think so. Larry Coker lasted three years with Miami after they joined the ACC. He's no good. Went seven to six. Got to fire him. You bring in Randy Shannon. He was the answer. Five and seven, seven and six, nine and four. We're back. Oh my God, we're back. Uh, nope, next year, 7-5, and got to get rid of him. Let's bring in Al Golden. Yeah, what could go wrong? 6-6, six 7-5, and 9-4, six, 6-7, and 4-3, and four, six and four and fired midseason. Let's bring in the football Jesus, Marcus Richt. Yes, let's bring him in. This will be great. 9-4, and 10-3, the best season Miami has ever had since joining the ACC. 10-3, even managed to win the division, which they've only done one time. One time, and that was under Mark Richt, 10-3 in 2017. 2018, he goes 7-6, and six, and y'all ran him out of town. No one believes no kind of stories about retirement. or anything. We all know y'all ran him out, period. Then you bring in Manny Diaz, 6-7, and 8-3 and three last year. Remarkable. Now you're off to a 1-2 start this season. And what do you know? The Miami man wants, um, wants Manny Diaz fired. And again, I'm not saying it's right, wrong, whatever, that he should or shouldn't be fired or whatever. This is, you're never going to get out of the hole that you're in doing this. It's just never going to happen. You have to give a coach three, four, five years. Now, look, if you get a season where you're going two and ten or you got a situation like at Florida State, that's different. That's the wheels completely falling off. You've lost to two power five teams, two pretty good ones. One of them might be the best team in the country, Alabama. The other one, Michigan State, is undefeated and way better than anybody thought they were going to be. Now, I'm not trying to make excuses for Miami losses. That's y'all's job, and y'all do a pretty good job of you making an excuse every time. But th this is th 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 you're never going to get out of your own way doing this. Tennessee did this, and look where they're at. Look where they've been, and look where they're at. They're stuck. They're muddling around, uh, around bowl eligibility, and that's where Miami's headed. 
That's where you're headed. Now, Miami hasn't really had a problem making bowl games. Yes, there's been a season or two uh, where they didn't, but it's not like Tennessee where basically, you know, half the time they're not even making a bowl game. But that's where you're headed, Miami. And also, don't forget, Tennessee has a, muff, a much tougher road every single year to bowl eligibility than Miami does. Look around the ACC. There's nothing there. Remember when Miami joined the ACC? Everybody said, oh, my God, Miami and Florida State are in opposite divisions. Well, they're going to play in the uh, ACC championship game every single year. Go ahead and pencil it in. They ain't played in the ACC championship game not one time, mainly because Miami's only made it to the ACC championship game one time. Florida State and Clemson are in one division in the ACC. Miami's in the other. And that division is absolutely horrible. Horrible. Look at the teams that are in Miami's division in the ACC. Look at this. Now, none of these divisions are hard, but in the Atlantic, you got Clemson, Louisville, Wake Forest, Boston College, Florida State, Syracuse, and NC State. Now, I know Florida State's in the toilet now, but for the majority of time that uh, uh, Miami's been in the ACC, Florida State's been pretty good. So you've had two pretty good teams in that division. But you look down in the coastal, this is a who's who of hot doo-doo. Virginia, Virginia Tech, Pitt, North Carolina, please. They've been a decent team the last three years under Mac Brown. Other than that, doo-doo. Then you got Miami and Duke, one of the worst Power Five teams in America. And Miami's only been able to win. Look at this division. Look. Miami's only been able to win this. Georgia Tech is in there. Look what the, look. Miami's only been able to win this division once. Once in 17 years. 17 years Miami has been in the ACC. They've won this hot can of doo-doo division one friggin' time. And do you want to know why? It's because on average, you have changed coaches every 3.2 years since joining the ACC. Every 3.2 years. You're never going to do anything, ever. Now, if maybe, is it possible that all six of the coaches, God, Say it out loud. Six coaches. Six. Is it possible that all six of these coaches were bad hires? It's possible. Is it possible all six of these coaches were terrible coaches? No, uh, because we know Mark Rick wasn't a terrible coach. Look at what he did at Georgia in the SEC. He was when he averaged, averaged. 15 years Mark Rick was in the SEC, the best conference in all of football, and it's not even close, and he averaged 10 and a half wins a season. He averaged 10 and a half wins a season. Miami has one 10 win season in 17 years. Pitiful. Two bowl wins. Miami's won two bowl games in 17 years. The fans, just like at Tennessee. Now, and, and this video isn't about Tennessee because Tennessee fans, the majority of them now, understand, I think, the reality that Tennessee football is living in. But that wasn't the case uh, for the majority of the last 10 years. Miami fans don't understand the reality that Miami is in. Miami fans still think that every bad year they have is just a bad year, right? Uh, just one bad year, just a bad, you know, one bad team. Uh, you know, well, we just had a bad quarterback, fix that next year. Miami's a bad program. It's a bad football program. Um, it's not a top 25 program in America right now. And I'm not talking, again, I'm not talking about this year's Miami team. Clearly, this year's Miami team is not a top 25 team. I'm talking about the, the best 25 football programs across college football. Miami ain't showing up on that list. But the fans, it, it, it's just, you have to let the pass go if you're Miami. Okay? This is not the 80s. This is not the 90s. This isn't even 2001. Yes, you won five national championships during that time period. And that's amazing. And no matter how good or bad you get today or tomorrow or next year or 10 years from now, that will never change. You were um, at or near the top of the college football world almost every single year from the mid-80s to early 2000s, basically. And no one's trying to take that away. And, you know, five rings and all that kind of It's great. I mean, that was a great run. That has nothing, not, not a single thing to do with Miami football today. It's not helping you today. These recruits now, high school recruits now, grew up watching Alabama, Florida, uh, you know, 
Uh, no one cares is what I'm saying. It, it, you know, these recruits aren't what... There's, there's not any 17-year-old uh, high school football recruit roaming the halls of his high school, reminiscing about the glory days of Miami in the mid-90s. That's just not... I mean, that, that's just not a thing. That's only a thing for Miami fans. That's it. That's it. You're a bad program today. You're not one quarterback away. Uh, you're not one year away. It doesn't matter what coach or coaching staff you bring into Miami. You're not going to be very good next year. You're not. Um, you don't have... You can tell me all you want about the talent rankings or whatever. It is. Watch Miami play. There's not very many good players on that team. There's not. The offensive line is pretty bad. Uh, Derek King seems worse today than he did three years ago when he was at Houston. How's that possible? I don't know, but it is. You're just not a very good program, okay? You're not a good program, and good and bad programs cannot be fixed overnight. And this is the problem. The fans think that every time a change is made, whether it's a quarterback change or a coaching change or whatever else, that that's the key. That's the secret. That's the one thing you needed. There is no one thing Miami needs. They need a whole list of things, starting with an on-campus stadium, but I'm not even going to get into all that. It, it, that's sad. Miami players have to Uber to home games. Let that sink in. Miami players have to Uber to home games. That's sad. Get an on-campus stadium. But anyway, uh, the fans, just like Tennessee during the 2010s, the Miami fans have become part of the problem. And obviously, I'm not talking about all Miami fans, because, you know, th there's going to be somebody that gets in the comments, oh, I don't feel that way. I know. Uh, I'm talking about most or a large percentage, okay? <laughs> this idea that, well, we need Ed Reed because he, well, he played for Miami and he was pretty good and went to the NFL and he was pretty good safety. He should be head coach. That's part of the problem. That is part of the problem. The whole 305 mentality, we're from the 305, Dade County, South Beach, the U. <laughs> That's ridiculous. People are laughing at you. People are laughing at you. Any random area code in the state of Georgia has just as much or more high school talent than the 305. I, could you, I hear Miami fans say, we just need to recruit nothing but South Beach kids. Yeah, try that out. Try that out. See how that works. Uh, recruiting is national in 2021. Coaches have, or, or athletic departments have ridiculous recruiting budgets, planes, private planes, helicopters, recruiting staffs that are 20, 25 people deep with analysts and talent evaluators. This idea that, oh, well, all we need to do is recruit next door. You know, all we do, if we can just get nothing but kids from a 305, these are idiot fans. Idiot fans. The fact that Ed Reed is roaming around the Miami campus with a mob job, that's what it is. It's a mob job. It's a no-show job. Ed Reed, what is he, ambassador of football relations or amb whatever, uh, ambassador of football, whatever the hell he is. It's a nothing job. It's a no-show job. It's a mob job. He's, you know what Ed Reed is? A groupie. Ed Reed's, Ed Reed's just a paid groupie. That's it. That's all. He's not doing anything to help Miami. Tell, how is Miami better today? Then before Ed Reed got there with his mob job two years ago, how? How are they better today? How is, has recruiting increased? No. Has wins, uh, win totals gone up? No, they haven't. Uh, you're looking to have a terrible season this year. Look at y'all don't give up. Want your coach fired? You want Garrett King, you know, shipped back to uh, Houston on the first thing smoking? I mean, you guys are out of your mind. Out of your mind. If we could just get another with 305 kids, and you know, Ed Reed is a head coach, and uh, you, you know. <laughs> you get uh, what do you, what do you want? Brad Kaya as quarterback coach. Yeah, bring Brad Kaya back as quarterback coach. Get Michael Irvin in there as offensive coordinator. You guys are out of your ever loving minds. The fans at Miami have become part of the problem at this point. Your expectations do not match reality, and that's a problem. That's a problem. Um, it, it, and you know, go ahead and you type nineteen eighty. Oh, no, Lou talking about expectations versus reality. He thinks Georgia win national title every year, and they don't. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I don't think Georgia's winning the national title every year. Second of all, they're averaging 11 and a half, 12 wins a year. Uh, so yeah, but they're not winning a national title. Woo! -de 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 uh, Georgia's so far ahead of Miami right now; they aren't even in the same universe. Let that sink in. And then go oh, five. We got five rings. When do you ever get five rings? Yeah, great. If I was making this video in 1995, that would be a valid point. Uh, but it's not 1995, it's 2021. And in 2021, Miami 
is a terrible football program. And if you keep this shit up, changing coaches every three years, look at Tennessee's last 10 years. That's going to be Miami's next 10 years. If you keep changing coaches every three years, that's going to be you. You're going to be struggling to make a ball game every single year. Uh, you're going to be getting beat by a group of five teams. Um, you, how did you escape? But You're lucky you escaped when I went over App State. But see, what's going to happen is down the road, you're going to lose those games to the App States. Look at, again, look at Tennessee. Look at Tennessee's football program over the last 10 years. That's where Miami is headed. That's where Miami is headed. And the two biggest reasons, changing coaches every three years and fan expectations not matching reality. Be sure and tell me about the you, the culture of the you, though.